let's build a TBR for June. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome if you are new here. This month I am going to be doing a lot of sequels, a lot of sequels. I'm very excited because I need to catch up on some series that I have been reading. I just did my series update. I actually realized that there are a couple missing from that list. I don't know how I stopped tracking them. Also, we are back to super cash and sitting in my floor because as you guys know, I'm trying to be a little bit more informal with my videos because I've been a little stressed out and so I just want to come on here and talk to you guys about books and not necessarily make a big show of it. <laughs> so uh, that's that's where we are right now. We are doing some mental health things. <laughs> so obviously with a June TBR, I have to talk about the patron buddy read, right? Well, we have three. How did we end up doing three? I don't know. We're crazy, I guess. But um, Seven Devils, which is right here, is going to be one of our patron buddy reads. And it is sci-fi space opera-esque with a princess who joins a rebellion, if I remember correctly. I'm very excited for that. I'll, I'll post an image up here so you can actually see the cover of the book because it's kind of awesome cover. And then we have Honey Witch, which is going to be the fairy loot book of the month for May or supposed to be. I still have not received my copy. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> I had no plans to read it. As you guys know, I'm not a big cozy fantasy reader, but when we figured out that that was going to be the book of the month for fairy loot, we all decided, Hey, let's just go ahead and read it and get it out of the way see what we think. <laughs> and then uh, the third book is the sequel to Butcher and Blackbird, which is Leather and Lark by Brent Weaver. We are all big fans of Butcher and Blackbird. So when we realized this was going to be coming up in June, we were all like, well, let's just buddy read that too. <laughs> so I am pretty excited about the buddy reads that we have coming up. Also, I don't think you can see it here. Uh, let's see where you be there it goes five broken blades I really want to get to that um, it is one I'm looking forward to quite a bit and then there is the new crest panettiere that's up there that I want to get to but let's go ahead and talk about the sequels that I need to pick up the glaringly obvious choice here and that would be the lonesome crown by Brian Lee Durfee I absolutely love this series and I have tried to read this. This is actually on my pile of shame in books that I had to <laughs> set down because I didn't have the brain power to tackle them at the time. And so uh, definitely, definitely need to be reading this one. Very grimdark series, but also just amazing. <laughs> Next, we have All the Hidden Paths by Foz Meadows. One of my favorite books of last year was A Strange and Stubborn Endurance, which is, this is the follow-up to A Strange and Stubborn Endurance. I didn't realize this was going to be a series. So I saw this and then I had to buy it. <laughs> and I don't even know what the story is that we are going to be picking up on. I do see that we still have our main characters here. So I'm very excited. Also, my cover is wonky, like my dust jacket. I don't, I can't get it to sit right on the book. Anyway, that's what you get from order, for ordering it from Amazon, right? But I kind of don't want to know. I kind of just want to go into this blind because I loved, loved the first book. And I don't know where it's going to pick up from because of what happened at the end of the first book. It's had a very good conclusion like one that I was really happy satisfied with but let's let's catch back up with some of our favorite characters here and see what happens another that has ended up on my pile of shame is a shade of madness by Tiago Abdallah now a touch of light is the first book in the series I think I said something else in my other video I don't know what I was thinking but I think I got two titles kind of jumbled up in my brain <laughs> whenever I was talking about it Anyway, pile of shame. I started this, couldn't focus on it, had to set it down. Epic world building, great politics. The first book had me gasping 
uh, at the end. And I basically told Tiago, why, why did you do this to me? <laughs> but I'm looking forward to getting to the Griffin magic a little bit more, exploring that. And yeah, I need to read this book so badly. Oh, before I forget, there is one series that I don't have physically, but I could do the audiobooks of, and that would be um, Savage Rebellion. Um, the second book, I think, is Savage Bounty. I will look up the second book and post an image here. But I really, really want to continue with this one. I really enjoyed that first book, so need to pick up the rest of the series. All right, and then The Spider by Leo Caru. Yes, this has been on multiple TBRs of mine and it keeps getting bypassed. So I definitely need to get to this one. This one has very much like a Game of Thrones type of Vikings feel. I know those two things are not exactly the same, but you know, we have the North and the South kind of battling it out. What I like about this specific story is that we have the Northerners and we get their point of view. We have the southerners and we get their point of view and how things are clashing and why they're fighting and why the generals of this army are like going at it like it, it it's really good to watch it from both sides and not have such a one-sided story very much looking forward to this okay i don't feel so bad anymore because it says imagine game of thrones rewritten by john lee care <laughs> so I, i'm not alone in thinking that <laughs> Oh, another that keeps hitting lists of mine and never gets read. That would be A Desolation Called Peace by Arcady Martin. I know why I put this one off. And I, this one is slow paced and character driven. And I really got to be in the mood for that. But I need to get to this one because I really enjoyed A Memory Called Empire. I know I gave it 3.5 stars. That was a lot based on personal tastes. But <laughs> come on now. Come on. And then we have Sorcery of a Queen by Brian Naslin. Now, I read Bloodwind XL quite a while ago. I would like to say uh, probably a year ago. And I do still have fond memories of it because I really like the introduction of science into a fantasy setting. That was interesting to see. I really liked the story of the dragons and what was going on with them. And I really liked uh, the, pol the politics in this series. And I've talked to a couple of people who are like, no, this never hits a favorites list of anybody's. Well, the first book hit a favorites list of mine if you watch my top 100. But I definitely, definitely want to move on to the second book. <laughs> Another that I'm putting off for no apparent reason, Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Tracaborty. Yes, I've read the first book. Yes, it has been quite a while. I think it's been over a year since I read, uh, what's the first one? City of Brass. Uh, I liked it a lot so i want to continue david bod is incredibly popular this book is heavy and it keeps like flopping <laughs> so i'm sorry about that um but i definitely definitely need to continue on with this one find out if i like it i'm scared and i know why i'm scared the first 20 percent of the city of brass was so boring so slow and i know that this is going to start that way <laughs> And so I just put it off and I don't want to pick it up. However, I ended up giving the city of brass 4.5 stars. I couldn't give it a full five star because the first 20% was so dang slow. So I do think that I will enjoy this if I can ever bring myself to read it. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Son of the Poison Rose by Jonathan Mayberry. Uh, Kagan the Damned. I loved Kagan the Damned. It was so good. It was so dark, so visceral. I just have a new favorite dark fantasy, I do believe. <laughs> uh, I don't think this is ever going to top Blood Song or Draconis Memoria. So don't, let's not say new favorite, but really high up on that list. And so I just need to read the second one and the third one comes out next month. I am so excited. I might just have to binge this series. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Another very obvious addition to this list, Athera Grave. Now, I have to be, I want to say I have to be in the mood for this, but that's not necessarily true. I'm always in the mood for Athera Grave. I have to be in the right mindset for this. I really, <laughs> really have to be able to sit down with this book and kind of binge it a bit. Essa is very, very detailed in her storytelling and a lot can go to the wayside. Um, 
<laughs> whenever you're not uh, paying attention. So I do need to be able to sit down with this for quite some time, maybe pick a day and just devote my time to this particular book. I might even have to like set aside some time to vlog and maybe see if I can get my patrons to sprint with me or however that needs to go so that I can actually get into this and finish it. I don't know how my books keep getting damaged in the weirdest ways. Like where did that come from? You would think a bookshelf, right? Like it got stuck up against a bookshelf. No, it's been on this cart. Whatever. Oh, one other than that I forgot to grab. It's sitting way over there, so I don't want to go get it. But The Art of Destiny. Um, I did read The Art of Prophecy last year. Absolutely loved it. And so I would really like to get to the second book in that one as well. Of course, for May, I had Ancillary Sword on my TBR, but I didn't get around to it. I knew I wasn't going to get around to that whole uh, TBR MBR that I made. I was hoping to make a little bit more progress in it than I did. It's fine. It's fine. So I'm going to talk about three that were on that list that I still want to get to this being one of them, but obviously I need to continue on with this series. I really enjoyed the first book. It was weird and I was lost for a good majority of it. I want to say the first 50%. And I talked about this too. I think that is because the main character herself is a little lost. And so I, I just, yeah, <laughs> I want to get it back into it, like I said, and I would also even like to reread the first book now that I know what's happening, but I know what's happening. So I need to go ahead and continue so that I don't lose that and then maybe go back and reread the whole series. That sounds like a better plan in my brain. Okay. The next two, <laughs> um, I had a feeling, I thought I was going to read this book for sure, but I had a feeling that the, the next book, not this one, um, I wouldn't get around to because I knew I was reading Empire of the Damned. But I did not get around to reading A Feather So Black. This one is one of my most anticipated reads of the year. Not because I went into purchasing this with any kind of anticipation. Obviously, this is a fairy loot book. But all of my friends read it before it like came out. Like there was arcs of it going around everywhere and I didn't get one. And so <laughs> they all read it and they were like, oh, Trinity, oh, you're going to love this book. Oh my gosh, you are going to love this book. So... I really want to get to it. I also have the familiar um, up here, but I already have the audio. So I'll probably start that before June. We shall see. <sighs> lastly, lastly, I do need to make progress on my 12 books by 12 friends. And so I do need to start The Will of the Many. This is probably my most anticipated book on that list because I do think this has the potential to be a five star. Am I going to rate it five stars? I don't know. I am also one of those people who really does not like hyped books. So, and I, I say that once a book gets to a certain level of hype, my brain says it's perfect. It has to be. Everybody thinks that it's so great. So it has to be perfect. And then when it's not, I'm disappointed. So I try not to latch on to hype too much. And I try not to buy books based on hype too much. However, Nico put this on my 12 by 12. So I gave into the hype just a little bit so that I could read the book that he picked for me. But I'm very excited about this list. Again, there are some chonkers on here. So will I get to everything? I don't know. But I did end up reading uh, more books this last month than I thought I was going to. Haven't finished Empire of the Damned yet. And I am kind of bouncing back and forth between quicker paced books and Empire of the Damned. And I was doing that for the readathon. So I might just solely go back to reading Empire of the Damned. It's probably the best option at this point. And then pick up the familiar when I'm done with Empire of the Damned. <laughs> All right, that's it for my video today. I do have a Patreon if you would like to see the vlogs if you're missing the vlogs if you would like to support my channel and what i do here also i got a new shirt it says dead inside but caffeinated <laughs> i thought it was really cute and fit the whole bookish thing we got going on here um also if you guys see anything on my like tbr cart that you think i could potentially give five stars Give me a shout because we have three five stars that we have <laughs> read this year. I, I guess. Um, and I'm really dying for a five star read. So 
I, I just, <laughs> I need something, you know, to keep me going because I, I just need a five star. I need one real bad, real, real bad. <laughs> all right. That's it for my video. Like subscribe, do all the fun things. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.